Let's talk economics. Yes. Although Falling Frontier looks like, and certainly at times, plays like a normal RTS, it's far from it. It utilizes a unique resourcing system that physicalizes the acquisition and usage of resources throughout the game world. Due to the militarized nature of space travel, citizens can only reproduce on colonies. They also generate more income per citizen compared to those serving on a starship or space station. Citizens in space receive a tax cut due to the hazardous conditions of working in space. Love it. I just the space The visuals are amazing. Acts as a gateway to the colony beneath. Citizens can be transferred between the colony and the spaceport at any time. The spaceport is a logistical hub structure and major chain in any logistical framework. In the early game, mining ships return mined ore and fuel to the spaceport to be either used for construction in orbit. Already, like, I'm digging this. I want to add to this. Apologies for stopping this, but I do want to add that within this, there are going to be a finite amount of resources. So it's very... And I'm sure that it's still planned that way. Am I correct, Todd? He's in here now. But, like, there is a finite amount of resources when you start the skirmish mode battle against AI. And so it's a line of sight type of game when it comes to the gameplay. Good. Okay. And so, like, I love that there's a finite amount of resources. So you have to make decisions very, very carefully. So, like, every decision that you make is is very impactful, uh to your success or not to your success or your failure so i i definitely dig that definitely dig that distribution to other orbital structures for consumption or to be sent to other space ports or supply depots oh, i love that effect and the sound effects on that that was nice on each structure refill thresholds can be set when the structure's local stores of that resource type drops below the set refill level a supply order will be created in the connected spaceport nice the spaceport will then begin to build supply transports and send resources until the resource refill quote has been met also we talked in the interview i'm so sorry but i'm so very excited for this game it's, it's a very strategic based game this is like space chess for me so like one of the things that you can do that todd and i talked about say you're falling behind you can if you if you are able to find uh, a fleet uh, a supply fleet you can go in and you actually affect the supply line you can actually take out the supplies going to and from areas uh, that are very important uh, which which to me I love that I love that right on a larger scale a player can connect logistical structures and the process of monitoring and sending supplies will begin The what, Masters of Orion, Chrono? I love Masters of Orion, dude. The only primary resource that isn't included in the automated process are citizens. Due to their immense value, a supply order must be created manually and placed in a backlog to be fulfilled. Unlike other RTSs, the top resource panel displays the resources of the logistical structure the player's mouse is closest to. Mm -hmm. Just like today, money, or credits in Falling Frontier, has moved into the digital space and can be accessed from anywhere in the star system. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Not Chad's. Further to the main economy. <laughs> if you guys don't know what Todd's talking about from Stutter Fox Studios, please watch the interview. It was really funny. <laughs> Todd and I created a new cryptocurrency called Chad. We're going to release it this year. <laughs> Starships have their own sub economy. This consists of the previously mentioned citizen resource, as well as operational requirements, such as food, munitions, and fuel. <laughs> Citizens right, right. form the backbone of your crew and can be converted into officers to command your ships. Officers can undergo additional training to enhance a ship's statistics and abilities. Yes, I love that. Food is consumed by the crew. Without it, the crew will slowly starve. Nice. If the crew manages to escape a doomed ship, the remaining food is added to the escape pods, allowing the crew to survive for longer in the deep of space. 
Munitions are consumed every time a turret fires, or in some instances, when a special ability is used. Such as laying a minefield. Ships can sail. You guys checking out these explosions and the and, and the physics behind uh, it's physicalized inventory number one, which I absolutely love. The absolute the, the animations right here are the physics of the shots. Not all of them are going to hit, which is also I believe skill based, but uh, behind the crew that you have and also the types of turrets uh, that you're using on the ship. It's fucking amazing, man. I mean, like this is fucking amazing. You can customize your ship. This is great. This is everything I wanted. This is everything I wanted. It's and like I was talking about earlier when I first found this. It's like a Star Citizen RTS. Like that's that's kind of like the first thing that hit to my brain. I was like, wow, this is fantastic. This is exactly what I want. Definitely yes. At speeds, however, faster and the than food is a nice touch. I didn't know about the food. Any flotilla will need to travel with supply and refueling ships. Look at those explosions, man. That's nice. I love how you are you you are starting to master the content Todd like I really love the voice I really love uh, the narration of it I really love how like it keeps me it keeps me interested there's two more I want to get into as well I'm so behind this title I am I am 110% behind this title um the next is nebula so let's let's learn a little bit about the nebula and falling frontier Great animation. Great music too as well. And they, uh, Todd has somebody, he's got making music for this. I'll put his link in the YouTubes as well. I'll put all the necessary links down when this goes to YouTube. Wow. Fantastic. Okay, so more information here, and this is this this is making me feel real good and hyped about it. But I do want pe people understanding when this comes out, it's basically like a skirmish mode RTS to start that we want to be built into something more. So there there has to be some money inflow into this. Uh, Todd is already said if this is successful upon launch that he will look into expanding this into multiplayer. Uh, I mean, hell, I'm not quite sure about campaign modes because that is a huge undertaking. And, you know, Todd is literally doing this by himself, guys. This is one man's work. Like, this is the thing that, like, just blows my mind and why I love this new era of gaming and the genre that we're in right now when it comes to, to uh, made games that are backed by us, the people, the gamers, uh, and so the way he's funding it is by selling it campaign as a priority over multiplayer says Todd. That's good to know. That's good to know. I think that's probably the smartest move too, Todd, you know, because there's a lot more people that are probably going to be interested in the campaign mode than there will be the multiplayer. So that's probably the smartest move financially, bro. So I <laughs> get what you're doing right there. Uh, so I, I will say this is something that uh, if is successful upon launch, which, you know, I I'm telling everybody right now that I think this is something to get behind. I, I endorse this. I've talked with him. I know he's sincere and his heart is behind it. I've seen the I've seen the amazingness. I know what he's capable of. And I would say this. 
you know, the initial price point, uh, I would say like I'd pay nearly 35, 40 bucks for this just to start. And knowing that it's going to be even more and more and more then I'm going to be cool with that. I'm going to be cool with that. And I think that like, if it is successful, which I hope to God it is, it will be nice to see an evolution. It will be nice to see like it continue to grow. I like that. I want that. I want that. It looks it looks so rich. Okay, you have been very busy, man. <laughs> you have been very busy since last time we met, dude. <laughs> like, dude, don't get out much. You are like, your monitor has sucked you in. You went Tron mode on this shit, dude. Like, <laughs> You are in the, the system right now, man. It is douche bump material, man. It's, it's great. I'll put that link when we when we go to the YouTube. Amazing, 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 amazing. Now this is something I haven't watched here. He's given us access to uh, a video that's not public, which is great. Let's check it out together, guys. Let's see what we got here. Oh, we got some gameplay. Nice. We got some, it looks like some test footage. The right, right, the, the, the in-world UI is nice, man. You can see munitions, that's cool. You can see health, you can see supplies. That's fantastic, man. So each ship has its statistical layout that you can easily get to. That's that's fantastic. Because because the resources are finite, you want to keep your ships alive. One thing we talked about in our interview was how important it is your your decision making because these resources are finite is in the glitch when it takes damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's much. Dude. Oh, nice. 
space, man. There's some like drifting, <laughs> like. It's gonna be available on Steam, I'm pretty sure. That's a good question. That's a good question. Oh, damn, man. That took so much damage. That shit just blew up from, like, internal combustion, dude. Like, <laughs> What was that? That was, like, fantastic. That was really cool, dude. That's a really good question that Triple brings up. He's saying, is the highlighted green area your your attack range? I can see, like, uh, the, the, that is so fantastic. That was so good, man. That was so good. That was so good. It looks like the con knew what was up. <laughs> the con knew what was up. It's the weapons range. It's the weapons range. And range is affected by what type of turret that you have on there and skill based upon the crew that you have in there as well, I'm pretty sure. And the, the, the exciting thing is this. I really feel like, you know, he's going to get it to the point where it is a very playable skirmish RTS mode right from the start. Then I feel like if it's very successful, that it will continually be approved, improved upon. So I'm very excited about this title. Uh, I'm very, very excited. <laughs> Triple saying it's one of his. I love that. <laughs> so the next thing I want to watch is the exploration and operations. Uh, I believe there is a link to the Steam. And like I said, like when this hits the YouTube channel, I will put the 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 links um, to to everything. Just so you guys are aware of this. I've talked about this a lot on my channel and it's nice because i haven't done it in a while so it's nice to kind of revisit uh and see like the evolution to see these upgrades man it's 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 absolutely fantastic let's let's watch a little bit about exploration here exploration and operations exploration in falling frontier changes as the player invests in technology in the early game Every spaceport has access to three exploration probes. Nice, These nice. These probes can be sent anywhere within the line of sight of the station. This is what we were talking about, line of sight. And these probes actually can, can you can take them into narrow bands that shoot a long way across the map, or you can take them in very wide versions that are a little bit shorter so that you can see units either approaching you, that you can see bases approaching you. I really love this LOS feature. This is something I talked about a lot with Todd. I, I really like this. It's, it, it is very kind of intriguing. It's a, it's a really fun kind of hide and seek gameplay that I really dig with this. The scouting and the scanning and the, you know, like, where are they at? Like, you know, you don't know if behind this there's some, like, you can see, like, there's positional, there's positions behind the planet. You don't know that unless you're actually able to put these uh, stations out there that can detect them. I love it. Like, that is cool. That is cool to me. And within a specific upgradable range, the life of a probe is simple, but its implications could impact the player dramatically. Probes travel along a path. Once they arrive at their destination, they will perform a scan. Objects nice. that are returned are then presented as radar pings within the military UI. The data returned can vary from the discovery of a celestial body, resource sites, wreckage, enemy structures, and Nice. Persons. How that data is presented will also vary based on a number of factors. The more objects that are closer together, or the larger the object, the larger the radar ping. Investing in probe technology can help identify individual ships nice. or structures when a scan is carried out. Additionally, the nearer a probe is to an enemy object, the greater the chance the probe will be discovered. If a probe is discovered, there is a chance it may also be destroyed. I like this probe concept. I think this is this new, Todd. We didn't talk about probes. We talked about the uh, the the stations that sent out signals. Now. Are the probes essentially like an addition to those stations? Uh, okay, are you keeping the original uh, scanner stations? Or are we just going with probes now? I just, I'm just curious because I remember when we had talked in the past. I want to like just clarify for people. I like the probes idea. Are you keeping? Uh, it's an addition, dude. He's fucking brilliant. I was so happy by that answer. I was, I'm like so happy by that answer that he didn't get rid of the recon stations. This is why I love him. Hold on a second. Let me just, 
let me just respect you for a moment here for not getting rid of the recon stations, dude. Like, I I was going to say, I was going to get a little bit salty if you took the recon stations away, dude. <laughs> Anything with probing a DG is all for it, says Tribble. <laughs> I was about to, like, chew you out if you took those recon stations outside. Not going to lie, dude. I'm like, don't just go all probes, bro. But you, but you know, you know, and see, this is why I'm very confident behind this title, dude. I don't have to tell you this shit. You already know it. This is the professionalism, dude. This is, this is why I'm backing this. It's, it's amazing. Doug, God, Doug God wants probing, says us. If the probe is discovered and not destroyed, the player will get the data returned by the probe. If, however, the probe <laughs> is discovered and destroyed, then the player nice. will never know why it failed, as it's also possible for probes to break down and never return. Nice. A discovered probe is an opportunity for the enemy to potentially identify where the probe originated Love from. Love this additional gameplay, Operations. man. Operations in Falling Frontier are suggested opportunities available based on direct action of the player and AI. Some radar pings from probes and recon stations will generate operations. These can range from simple investigations involving celestial bodies and natural Ooh, phenomena. Look at that investigate option. Nice. Such as disrupting a refueling operation in an asteroid field, assaulting an enemy supply chain, or eliminating targets of opportunity. Operations will. This is fucking space chess, man. This is fucking space chess. Real time fucking space chess, man. <laughs> nice. Also suggest potential defensive actions, suggest research tasks, as well as construction recommendations. Operations so are this. entirely optional. Specific types can be disabled, or an operation can be removed from the list of available operations at any time. It's a very line of sight LOS hide and seek kind of gameplay. You know, that's a, that's a big portion of the uh, strategy within this game, uh, Triple. Staying hidden as long as possible. God damn it. Oh. Oh, man, it's so good, man. It's been a while since I got to really look at some of the content and some of the evolution of the game. And, man, you just got me as excited as the first time, dude. That's very hard to do. Let me just say that's very hard to do. I know we got a lot of new faces here. Uh, we got a lot of new members in our family. We got a lot of new members here at DG360. And if you haven't heard me talk about Falling Frontier, please take some time to go to the YouTube channel. Go search up the content. And I am really, really happy about the direction that Todd's taking uh, Falling Frontier. It l it's just continually looking better and better and better and better. And every time I think that that's the, the like we hit a plateau, Todd just like ramps it up and makes it even better. So like I am really behind Todd. I'm really behind what he's doing here for falling frontier. I highly recommend you guys go check it out. When I put on the YouTube channel, I'll put all the necessary links. Uh, it will be sold. I believe on steam. Correct. Uh, correct. Uh, Todd, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be sold on steam. Um, uh, not quite sure now that you picked up a publisher, if that's still the case or not. But you let me know, uh, Steam. Okay, okay, great, great. All right, so I'll put I'll put like the links down there for you guys to stay posted to this. And like I said, I highly endorse this, and I want people to re recognize though that the initially when this comes out, it's going to be all AI and it's going to be all kind of skirmish mode, uh, RTS mode. And I, and even though some people might say, oh well, I I want a little bit more than that. I think what you're going to see is that if you back this and you help out Todd, that it will become much more. And I really want to see this get into like that next, that next stage. So I say members here of this community, go back it. Uh, you know, as soon as you can buy it, buy it. I'm going to do the same. I will put that content on my channel and I'm really looking forward to it. So thank you, Todd, for joining us here on the stream and thank you for all the information here you're really getting great uh presenting it with the content i think you're doing a, a fabulous job dude uh he's also saying there's some big announcements coming in the coming months that's great that's cool dude <laughs> really looking forward to it i'm really happy that you got picked up by a publisher that's amazing news dude i mean that's 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 a dream bro so i'm really really happy for you man Really happy. I, I wish the best to you, and we will continue to support you. 
Uh, everybody check it out. Falling Frontier, my friend Todd of Stutter Fox Studios.